What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. You'll get a free $15 to spend on magic cards and you'll be supporting the channel when you do it. Additionally, you can also join the patron. Not only will you get to vote on a weekly voted deck tech that I go ahead and cover on the channel, but additionally you'll be supporting the channel. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons. Newsome, you rock. Now let's get into today's video and today I kind of wanted to go over the past two sets we went over because honestly there's a lot of sets happening all at once and it's kind of hard and very easy to get lost in all of the cards being thrown at us so I kind of wanted to go over 15 cards that I think we might have missed and I think provide a lot of value for a lot of decks we're gonna go over uh, murders at Karlov Manor and then again the most recent fallout decks maybe we missed something there so without further ado let's get into it the first thing I want to talk about is a category of cards that I always look for when deck building. They cover two out of the three categories I look for. The three categories we're always talking about are card advantage, removal, and uh, ramp. And these cards do two of the three of those. The first one we're going to look at is Bottle Cap Blast. Now, this one's really good in artifact decks because of that improvised ability. And then again, we're just going to get a ton of treasure tokens depending on what we're killing. Not to mention, five damage is a lot and kills 90% of what is in the format. A lot of the cards that we need to kill and fast are just low power but have very impactful abilities. So Bottle Cap Blast is definitely going to do the job, especially in a red deck. So we're going to take that extra ramp and we're going to get rid of our opponent's creatures while doing it. Another one that I think people glossed over but has really put in work for me is Buried in the Garden. Not only does it let your land tap for additional mana, but again, it's going to get rid of one of those pesky creatures that our opponents have, covering those two categories like I was talking about earlier. Uh, Case of the Ransacked Lab, again, it's going to lower the cost of your instant sorcery spells which is kind of in the ramp category and then once we solve it we are going to get card advantage off of casting our spells storm lists are always looking for this so if you're not on it i would definitely get on it it's going to put in a ton of work for you especially in those is it decks that all they want to do is cast a lot of instant and sorcery spells another one that covers both categories and is honestly an amazing commander all by herself is rose cut the raider now what i like about this card is it's very easy to get off and the floor is very low right we get the junk tokens on attack so we don't have to even connect so any aggro deck i would probably be running rose in as long as you have red it's kind of like a mini jessica's will every single turn right the low bar is we get three junk tokens and then three mana that's just going to get you there it's kind of like a corval thing with the treasures but in one card i'm in love with this card and you're definitely going to be seeing it in some of my deck techs coming up Another one that I think definitely got glossed over was World Souls Rage. Now, this is not only a removal spell, but it lets you put a ton of lands onto the battlefield. Any deck that you're running a lot of fetch lands in, I would definitely start running this. Solid removal, solid ramp spell. We're always looking for flex cards that can do more than just what they say. And uh, World Souls Rage is one of those cards, especially when you also get to take out one of your opponent's creatures while doing it. Now, moving on, I think these cards are just really useful that uh, could see a lot of play but don't right now right uh, obviously they're new but we have connecting the dots now this is more probably in a boros style deck but even now white is getting a decent amount of card advantage so it's not as good as it would have been years ago but i still think it's pretty good the fact that we're going to get to draw a ton of cards based on how many creatures attack is massive again we don't have to deal combat damage so that gets rid of one of the barriers we have to get crossed this is going to be amazing in your goblin style decks insidious roots now this is another card this one's probably a little more niche you definitely want to be playing a graveyard strategy you definitely want to be reanimating a ton of cards and even maybe you're trying to uh, exile cards from your graveyard as long as they're leaving the graveyard this thing is triggering and then it not only g builds you a super wide board state but it builds you a super wide board state that additionally can tap for mana now the first commander that came to mind when i was thinking about this card is definitely tiam which i think i am going to build a tiam uh, deck at some point i already have a cdh version and i've kind of been itching to play it in casual so definitely be on the lookout for that and let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments down below now another one that i think is going to see a lot of play especially in voltron style decks is strong back now not only does this lower the 
equip costs of your equipment, but additionally, it's going to fix the mana cost on all of your auras as well. I don't think we've ever seen a card that flexible that necessarily does that, but this is going to turn all of those very low-costed equipment spells into just free equipping, and yeah, even your aura spells, so stuff like... Um, Gargaros, Gargaros, the vicious rate or vicious watcher, I think the Hydra guy. Yeah, he's going to love this. And additionally, just any equipment deck with green in it or aura spell deck with green in it. I think you are going to be one of wanting to run this because additionally it does give you that plus two for each or an equipment attached to the creature as well so you're not only getting a massive bust you're getting a massive cost reduction and you're additionally getting another massive cost reduction on your equipment spells the only thing i will say is you're usually not mixing aura and equipment but it is just good for both of those decks right Wild Wasteland is another one that's very new and probably people are just going to gloss right over, but you get to skip your draw step, but in return you get to impulse draw two cards. Now there's a ton of commanders that have really started caring about that impulse draw ability. We've got your Fildorn, we've got your, um, I forget him, Tomebound, somebody Tomebound, Prosper Tomebound. Yeah, again, there's just a lot of commanders that really care about casting things from exile you have lelia you have the war doctor we're getting a ton of them and honestly it's becoming an archetype all on its own so i would definitely pick this up skipping your draw step is just sounds like a good idea it's essentially a uh, phyrexian arena that draws you two cards in red sign me up right Another thing we have is inventory management, split second. This is going to be one of those cards that kills people out of nowhere, especially in equipment decks. You attack them with two creatures. They're going to block the one with all the equipment on it. Let one of them through. You switch all the equipment over and you kill them out of nowhere. This is going to become the new way to, again, kill people out of nowhere in Boros. Now that some of the other effects aren't as consistent. So yeah, I'm excited about this one, especially with that split second ability. They can't kill the creature in response or anything like that. So yeah, definitely excited to try this out and it is going to kill some people out of nowhere. Moving on, this one's kind of more of a pet card, but I do think some people are going to be able to utilize this card very well, is Power Fist. Now, where I see this being very useful is in decks that have uh, attack triggers, additionally decks that care about double strike, right? The fact that we get to hit them once, double our power, and then hit them again is going to really start killing some people, especially when you have a seven uh, power commander and that seven power commander has double strike, it will turn into a one shot kill, right? You deal seven damage, double its power, it deals 14 damage, boom, that's 21 and they're dead. So I do think this is going to be a very useful card it can even be shoved in decks that care about 1-1 counters because it's going to put 1-1 counters on your creatures extremely fast. Moving on, let's talk about the blimp. Guys, this is an insane card. We are turning artifact decks into lethal threats. Now, we already have Biotransference, but we can use this in Jeskai instead of Grixis, which is insane. So we don't need black anymore to make lethal threats with artifacts. Another thing that is really good about this card in particular is it's on ETB. It's not on cast etb is just way more abusable there's a lot of ways to loop artifacts in and out of the graveyard without casting them with something like goblin engineers and stuff like that so i'm very excited to play this card nine times out of ten we can probably just cheat it into play and it is just going to get us the win out of nowhere in some decks another thing is it does create tutus but those tutus are essentially four fours so it's kind of like sigil of the empty throne but for artifacts and on etb instead of cast yeah this card's just going to be in insane pick it up while it's two or 20 cents instead of a couple bucks right we don't know when the stuff's getting reprinted and that's kind of the uh goal of the video pick these up now instead of later while they're very useful and very new another card that i think kind of adds a lethal threat to a kind of struggling archetype is screeching scorch beast very cheap and oh my gosh mill is very lethal now all we have to do is slam this guy on the battlefield maybe we even reanimate it we don't have to pay the six mana to bring it onto the battlefield 
cast something like a traumatize and create an instant board state. So now they don't have to worry about milling out. They need to worry about our giant board state and that is probably nine times out of 10 going to be able to end the game. It is once per turn, but hey, that's okay when we are mass milling. So again, mass mill has another solid game ender. So definitely keep your eye out on that. Sierra is also going to be really good in those food archetypes, just making the food archetype even stronger than it already was. We can put this in something like something like a Rocco and really put those foods to work. Notably, she does trigger every time you sacrifice a food, but she does only work on one creature. So there's a little bit of a limiting factor there, but we've gotten a lot of food commanders in the past. We have Sam and Frodo. Again, we have Rocco, and this is just going to make those archetypes even stronger. Not to mention, she does really start stacking those counters on there fast. We can generate up to three a turn, assuming we deal combat damage to each opponent. So that can go three, six, nine, and really start making those creatures massive quickly. Another thing that we can add to this is extra combat steps, and that's just going to speed this up. So if you're a fan of food, definitely pick up this card. 15 cents, why not? Another card that I think people missed, but not the way you think, is the Pride of Hall Clade. Now, we all know this is very powerful for those Defender decks, but what I think people are missing is this is a Power Matters card. Now, why do I think that? Let's look at something like a Galta. It has 12 power and 12 defense, right? So we're still lowering the cost of the Pride of Hulk Clade with those Power Matter strategies, assuming most of the Power Matters cards have the same defense, which nine times out of 10, they kind of do. And then we can activate the Pride of Hulk Clade for just one mana, and it's going to buff up their power a little bit, making them bigger. A lot of the Power Matters cards already have trample on them such as Galta then we just connect and draw 12 cards off of our Galta it's kind of still really good and I think people do miss the fact that you can put this in a power matters deck and it's still going to put in a lot of work it's essentially like a four mana draw cards equal to your power which we're always looking for and we're already playing those cards anyway so with that being said, that's the end of the video, guys. Let me know what you think about these videos down below. I enjoy doing them, and uh, let me know in the comments down below any cards that I missed, right? We want the community to build good decks, so any cards that we missed during this crazy um, spoiler season, I think they were spoiling like three sets at once at one point, it's impossible to keep up with. So leave those underrated cards in the comment section down below. With that being said, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors. I would like to thank my high contributing page patrons Newsom, Prater, Excessum, and Chicken Salad. You guys are amazing. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.